Samsung just unveiled a premium XR headset infused with Gemini AI, and it's called Galaxy XR. And well, I got to try it out. That's really impressive. But here's what's weird. VR headsets like this one are kind of fading. Apple's already reportedly backing off and all the real energy, well, it's in AI glasses. So why is Samsung dropping this now? Kind of feels a little late to the party or maybe it's early to something else entirely. Because after trying it, I think this headset really tells us way more about the future of AI glasses than anyone's talking about. I'm Jason Howell, and one year ago, I was one of the first people invited to the Google campus to preview Galaxy XR, then it was named Project Muhan, in its earliest form. And Samsung just flew me out to New York to check it out again, ahead of its official launch. And now I can see exactly what changed, and what that might say about where Samsung is headed. The event itself was confident and definitely well-produced, but the more conversations I had there, the more it became clear to me that Galaxy XR really isn't the end game here. Now, don't get me wrong. The product demos, they ran smoothly, no demo fails. There were plenty of big names from Google, Samsung, and Qualcomm all on stage. And the overall vibe was that this was a big release after a year of buildup, but I couldn't help but notice something at the event. On the surface, Samsung Samsung showed enthusiasm for its hardware, but when pressed just a little deeper, they seemed to pivot to a broader vision with references like, this is just the beginning, that sort of thing. They mentioned future products that would be smaller, lighter, and more wearable. Yet I rarely heard the term glasses spoken out loud, even though they briefly teased future devices in collaboration with Warby Parker and Gentle Monster. The predominant language though was about evolution in the category. And that indicated to me that this was a calculated first step toward a much bigger vision that hasn't been fully revealed yet. And oddly enough, I think we have to start with pass through to get there. Because when I put the headset on, the one thing that hit me hardest was just how natural the world looked through those 4K lenses. The pass-through video was very clear, very true to life to my eyes. Honestly, it was the closest that I've seen to what the real world actually looks like through this type of a headset. It wasn't just a color display. It just lacked that digital fuzz that I'm so used to seeing. It also mapped and tracked my surroundings with really impressive accuracy. I gotta say, there's something special about how this device scales the room with the many cameras that it has on board. My hands were rock solid in space. They didn't feel distant or detached or out of scale. There was signage all the way across the room on the other side. It was legible. You know, lighting and shadows in the room all looked really natural. It was all very faithful to the environment. So pass-through is finally showing the real world as it is and not a crusty filtered version of it. It felt like something I could actually wear to see useful information layered on top of reality if it wasn't such a massive headset that it is. If the world looks this good in pass-through and Gemini can live inside it, well, suddenly smaller AI-driven smart glasses feel even more palatable. Speaking of Gemini, I was super impressed by how it's used to help move you through the system. Having AI kind of as a co-pilot that enhances the entire experience was a true treat and very effective. In fact, Gemini isn't tucked away. It isn't like a secondary feature. The operating system was built with Gemini at its core. So in essence, Gemini is the interface, at least to a certain degree. And that goes for opening apps, adjusting settings, navigating menus, all voice controllable through Gemini, summonable very easily. And yes, of course, you got Circle to search on board for literally anything that is seen by the system, including, you guessed it, that natural looking pass-through mode. With Gemini's contextual awareness, everything, including eye tracking, by the way, flowed through the cameras and the sensors in a way that felt seamless, felt natural, is really good at intuiting user intent without the need for specific syntax like Google Assistant that came before it. You just kind of ask for what you wanted to see and Gemini figured it out and handled it. Honestly, it was the clearest version I've seen of a future where AI isn't just like tacked onto the OS after 
the fact. To an extent, AI is crucial to Android XR. And I bet we're gonna see a lot more of that coming from Google and its competitors. Now these two signals, pass-through and Gemini, are pointing in the same direction. When you put them together, they become a clear indication of where all of this is headed. Pass-through makes the physical world feel present and alive through the headset. Gemini gives that world context. It gives it memory and meaning. So in essence, it feels less like mixing real and virtual together and more like enhancing reality and making the environment truly interactive. But the more these two systems work together inside of Galaxy XR, the more the XR form factor kind of starts to feel like a real bottleneck. Like I couldn't imagine walking through the city of New York with this strapped to my face, right? Even if it might actually be very useful to do so. What pass-through demonstrates is what it's like seeing the world as it is in a digital layer. And then Gemini makes the case of understanding that world more than ever. And then you put them together and they really make the case for the real utility of smart glasses. Now I realize I'm doing a lot of looking ahead right now, but let's take a look at what Samsung is actually offering at this moment with Galaxy XR. But before we do that, real quick, I check out a lot of XR devices, smart glasses, that sort of stuff on this channel. So if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss what I have in the works. I have a lot more to come. So then, what is Galaxy XR really great at right now? And what can it do that smart glasses simply can't? Well, one thing it absolutely nails is immersion. And this is the moment that hit me hardest, not just from a tech perspective, but emotionally as well. This was the thing that made the bigger, heavier headset actually feel worth it to me. During my hands-on demo, Samsung showed me an old black and white photo. They'd colorized it with AI and then transformed it into an animated spatialized video for the headset. And it wasn't just this static image floating out in front of me, it had real tangible depth really came alive and it looked really good. And what struck me in that moment is uh, my dad's Vietnam photo collection. When he passed away just a few years ago, I went through a ton of his photos from the war, digitized a bunch of old images. And this demo experience really had me considering what it might be like to experience some of those photos through this type of lens. Now. No AI animated replica is perfect. Obviously, I've seen some really bad ones, but the quality Samsung showed off here made me really curious to test it out for myself. Another thing, Google Photos inside of Galaxy XR. It has the ability to spatialize a user's entire image and video library. That idea really stuck with me too. Imagine re-seeing your entire photo library spatially and instantly with no post-processing. An incredibly powerful selling point. Another impressive demo that I saw was an unreleased feature they called System-Wide Auto Spatialization. I don't think that's gonna be the ultimate name for it, but that's what they were calling it now. Here, I was given a choice of any video from YouTube, and in my case, I actually chose a pre-recorded NBA game, just your standard TV NBA game. And in real time, the video was converted to three-dimensional spatialized view. So all the players on the court suddenly snapped into 3D and it was really cool. Latency for this, because it's happening on device, was minimal, around 20 milliseconds. The depth effect, very impressive to see. It was cool to see an NBA game with that immediate three-dimensional uh, view. And of course, I have to mention the Google Maps experience, placing myself inside of a fully three-dimensional map where I can you know, zip around the city in God mode and even walk through businesses in a full immersion view this is the sort of demo that really takes your breath away and it's gonna sell some units. Overall, these are things that this headset can do that smart glasses can't touch, at least not yet. Now, I did experience Google's Project Astra binocular lenses one year ago at the Google campus and they showed an impressive three-dimensional effect with those glasses. So it's possible to get there at some point, but for now, this headset really gets spatialization right. Is it worth $1,800 to get there on the other hand? Well, I'll leave that to you to decide. Witnessing the evolution of this headset from one year ago along with Google's Project Astra and then also experiencing Meta's Oakley's and the development of those 
those glasses, the picture becomes a lot clearer as to what XR is for if smart glasses also exist in the market. Headsets like Galaxy XR are really about immersion. It's about escaping your surroundings, really stepping into something else entirely, closing out the world and being in your own room. Smart glasses, on the other hand, are about enhancement, augmentation of the real world, overlaying context, making your real world environment smarter without removing you from it. And both of those things are incredibly valuable, but both satisfy obviously very different needs. What really strikes me is that Gemini works so noticeably well across both modes. In the headset, like I said earlier, it felt like an immersive co-pilot, but when I experienced it through glasses with Project Astra a year ago, it really felt like a daily utility. And that's where the real distinction lands for me. Headsets like Galaxy XR are for escaping reality. Glasses are for enhancing reality. And in this case, at least, Gemini happens to be the bridge between them. Now, one thing was definitely notable during my day in New York. There seemed to be a whole lot of subtext going on, even if people weren't saying it out loud. It seemed to me that the messaging I was getting from multiple reps was pretty clear. Smaller, lighter, and smarter is the ultimate destination. And to that end, I see Galaxy XR as a stepping stone towards that goal. And if that's the case, well, it lines up with what we've seen from Samsung before, right? The Note series was early, but in time, made a whole lot more sense to Samsung's bigger vision in mobile. More recently, its early efforts in foldables really showed how the company could pave the way toward an emerging and important, as we've seen, tech trend. And in both cases, early integrations that really seemed very niche at first turned out to be groundwork for something greater. For all its polish, and let me just say this is a very polished and impressive device to hold and to wear, it doesn't feel like it was built necessarily to dominate XR. And to its credit, it's priced much lower than the Apple Vision Pro, offers a lot of what makes that device so special, but it's also much more expensive than the MetaQuest headset, which is arguably the most proven VR hardware to date from a broad appeal perspective. To me, Galaxy XR feels like it was built to get the world used to the idea of wearing AI on its face. Now you could look at this as Samsung being late to the game, but Let's be honest, most people still won't buy this headset, and I think that's actually okay. I don't think it exists to conquer the market. It exists to light a path towards something that'll be much, much bigger. Galaxy XR exists to get developers thinking, to get consumers imagining, and to make AI feel wearable. And that puts Samsung in a strong position at the start of a major trend, just like they've done so many times before. Now that we've seen the fully revealed Galaxy XR, what did it look like a year ago And Google quietly let me preview its earliest form as Project Muhan for the very first time? Well, you can watch this video to see how much has changed and how many early clues were hiding in plain sight from the start. And let me know in the comments, are you more excited about Galaxy XR and XR headsets like it or AI or XR driven smart glasses? Leave a comment, let me know. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.